Container skills are at the top of almost every single job requirement for DevOps jobs in 2021. And as you might have guessed, that's probably going to go a little bit deeper than just being able to type Docker run and bring up a container. So in this video, I'm going to teach you about the skills that interviewers are looking for for those jobs, how I interview candidates to see if they have those skills, and then I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that you can use to level up your skills if you need to. So full disclaimer though, this is 100% my opinion. And my opinion comes from the different experiences and things that I've had to do throughout the years in using containers to get to this point. Anyone else in this industry has had a different journey and they're obviously gonna have different opinions about what's important and what's not important. And I say that not only to encourage you to watch this video and like it, share it, comment, hashtag shameless self-promotion, but also to look at videos from other people in this industry as well to get their opinions, to learn what's important to them. You'll end up with a better, more well-rounded understanding of what types of questions you might be asked whenever you do go into your DevOps job interview. Hey, what's up? I'm Will from DevOps for Developers, and in this channel, I talk about all things DevOps, from getting your first DevOps job all the way through to fully integrating DevOps throughout your entire organization. And in this video, we're talking about containers. As more and more companies start to use containers as a critical part of their infrastructure, the complexities of managing these containers are starting to surface. One of the key points to understanding this is that containerization is not orchestration, and so an interviewer might be probing to understand that you can distinguish between those two. Now during this part of the interview, you're gonna be tested for the fundamentals like starting and stopping Docker containers, getting CLI or command line access to a running container, building Docker files or building Docker images or building container images, and explaining the differences between a container and a virtual machine. Now if you interview with me, we're gonna cover all those things but to be honest, I, can, I expect all of the software engineers on my team to have those skills. If you're writing code that runs in a Docker image out on production, I expect you to have that basic level of understanding, even if you're not the DevOps person for that team. Now, if you're interviewing for a DevOps role, I expect you to have those skills, and we're also gonna go deeper into some of the following areas. One of the key things that I'm gonna be looking for is that you have a really solid understanding that anything that happens inside of a Docker container goes away with that Docker container. I'm gonna be looking for different things like knowledge that you can't install software into a Docker container while it's running. Well, you can and it works and it's fine until that Docker container dies. Container networking is really important, knowing how to expose different ports and how to get different containers to talk to each other both inside the network and exposing parts of that network for things that need external access, um, like you know the port that the API server runs on or different things like that. Building images is a huge part of this section because for most people, the output of the CI CD pipeline is a container image. And so during the build process, we're gonna build that and so I need you to understand how you push an image up to a repository where it can be accessed by our production servers for deployment. Also gonna to have to tag it and you've gotta have a pretty solid understanding of what tagging means and how we can do different things using tags to understand what steps triggered the build of this image, like what code changed that forced us to build a new image and what version of software does this image contain and whenever production starts up, how does it know of all the images in your repository, which one it should pull down and run in production. And since we're talking about building images at this point, we're also gonna talk about multi-stage builds. Those are really important to me because in almost every language out there, there's a difference between the code that the software engineering team wrote and the code that executes out in production, whether that's because it's been compiled or it's been transpiled or some third parts have been cached or different things like that. Either way, we've got to do something to transform that code from the engineers into a running production model. And at the same time, we don't want the original source code out in our images. And multi-stage builds is one way to accomplish that. We've also got to address logging as well. In many container type applications, the logs 
from the application just go to standard out or standard air. And so we've got to get those off of that container into a logging facility. And the logging facility can differ depending on who you're working with. They might be using you know, something like Logstash or Splunk or AWS CloudWatch Logs or any of those. And that's less important at this stage of the interview. The more important part is knowing that we've got to get those logs out of that container to some place where they're visible to us and the support team and our software engineering team. And then one thing that's bound to come up if you do this in a DevOps type environment is Docker in Docker. So you need to understand what that is. And basically what that is, is a lot of times our CI CD systems run as Docker containers themselves, yet they're expected to build Docker images as a result. And so you use Docker in Docker to accomplish that because of the different applications and permissions that are necessary to create a Docker image. And the final thing we're gonna talk about, it sort of falls into trivia, which I tend to avoid during interviews, but it's not really trivia. And that's just the fact that Docker is not containerization or Docker is not the only form of containerization. And you can even see it in this video. I've used the word Docker probably a hundred different times when I should have actually been using the word container. And it's really easy to slip into that but all I'm looking for here is just that you know that Docker is an implementation of containerization and it's not the only way to build containers. Now throughout this whole process, when I'm asking you these questions and we're talking about different scenarios, I'm not really looking for the exact syntax of a command and to see that you've memorized which flags go in which order because for me, like that's just a Google search away. What I'm looking for more is that if we're talking about you know, launching a database container that you know that data needs to be persisted somewhere and if we write it inside the container when that container dies all our data goes away so we've got to mount a volume into that container and configure that container or that database engine to use that mounted volume as its data store or as its file system so that we can save that data and we don't lose it and that's the thing i'm looking for there is like general concepts and practical application, not that you've memorized the exact flags for a specific scenario. Now that's just me, that's just how I do it. Other interviewers are gonna be different. And so that's one of the reasons why it's really important to figure out who you're interviewing with and what they're looking for. And if you want some guidance on that, check out my tips on communication in this video. And in that video, I teach you some tips and tricks and how to get basically the interviewer to tell you the answer that they want you to tell them without them knowing they just told you the answer. So be sure and check that one out. Okay, so if you need to level up your skills in containerization, here's what you do. Install and use Docker locally. And I know I just said that Docker is not the only way to do this, but for this particular application or this particular skill set, Docker is the easiest way to do it. Just install Docker Desktop and then go find something to install. Go find an image to run. Uh, if you don't know where to start, go search for Python SAS Starter Kit or insert whatever language you want to use in there and you'll find these really great open source repos where you can just download and run this application. And it's a fully functioning application so you don't have to worry about writing and building your own code. And in many instances, you'll already find a Docker file in there. So check out their Docker file, look what they've done, understand each of the steps in that Docker file, why it's there, and then launch that Docker file. And for a SaaS type application, you'll have not only the application itself, but you're gonna to have to use a database. So you'll need to launch and configure a database container. And some of them may require you know, a caching solution like Redis, and so you'll get to play with that as well. And then you'll want to get this up and running and then experiment with some networking. You know, How do you run this in a private network using something like Docker Compose so that the only port that's exposed is the API port in your database and your caching servers are protected back inside of that network. Now, once you've got all that up and running, just go crazy, do different things, log into the containers, try crazy steps, You know, break it, blow it up. As far as I'm aware, there's no such thing as bad karma from doing evil things to containers on your own local Docker system. So try it out. If you have the ability to access something like EKS or GKE or Amazon Fargate, one of those types, 
go ahead and deploy and launch and figure out how to run things out there as well. Now, if you don't, don't sweat it. You're going to get tons of experience here just working within your own Docker desktop environment. But if you do have access to one of those, that's just, you know, extra icing on your cake. One thing I will encourage you not to do, though, is if you don't have access to those, to run Kubernetes locally. If you're just getting started with containerization and orchestration, I want you to focus on those skills and master those skills first because Kubernetes is a whole nother beast. And I think if you try to learn Kubernetes in addition to the skills that we talked about here, it's just, gonna, it's just gonna end up overwhelming you and it's too much to take on right at this moment. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, leave me some comments down below. If you have questions, leave those comments down below as well. Also be sure to check out the rest of this playlist where I'm covering all of the different skills that are listed and required for DevOps jobs in 2021 to teach you what those skills are, what employers are looking for, and how to get those skills for yourself if you don't have them. And um, I'll see y'all in the next video.